Good morning, everybody. Welcome to episode 54 of My Yarny Corner. My name's Alex and I live in Yorkshire in the UK and this is a podcast all about knitting and crochet and this week's sewing and some other crafting. So settle in. It's not going to be um, a very long podcast. Um, I'll explain about that why in a minute. But yeah, I've just been knitting on socks as well. But first of all, before we get into any of that, I'll leave all the information about anything that I talk about in the description box below this video. Um, there are, we have, me and Danny have a make along running. There is the Ukraine sock make along running until the end of May as well, which I'm running with Jeanette from Crafty Clegg's Creations and Karen from Stitches and Jacks. So there are lots of things going on this month as well. All that information is in the description box below if you're new to the channel. Um, mine and Danny's make along finishes on the 1st of June. That is the hashtag take it easy mal, which is Danny's make along, and the hashtag test your limits mal, which is my make along. So if you've been doing those, they end on the 1st of June. So they're coming to an end shortly. <sighs> I feel old. So yeah, I'm gonna, it's not gonna be a very long podcast. I had a tooth out yesterday and it's still quite painful <laughs> this morning. So, um, I don't want to be talking for too long, so I'm probably going to be going for about 20 minutes if I can. So that's the first thing to get out of the way. I was so brave yesterday, I really was. For those of you that do not know me, you know that I do not do the dentist. First of all, in the UK, we can't actually... It's very, very hard to get an NHS dentist, and I've, I haven't had one since many, 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 many years Prior to lockdown, I had started um, seeing a dentist regularly, but it was private and I just couldn't afford to keep up with it. So once lockdown hit and I missed an appointment, I couldn't afford to go back to it. So I managed, well, what day are we on today? It's Wednesday today. You see this tomorrow. So it's Wednesday today on Monday afternoon. I've got this one tooth here I've been suffering with since summer last year. It's been really bad. And it's, the pain's been on and off, on and off with it. But Monday, it was so bad. Danny said, right, I'm going to ring. We have a service in the UK, which is called 111, where you can get like out of hours, doctors and dental things. Normally, if you ring that service, you've got to travel miles and miles for a dentist, if you can get one at all. And he managed to get me a dentist only a 20 minute drive away. I was so, so lucky to get this appointment. So I went yesterday and the dentist was absolutely fantastic and took the tooth straight out and said that they'll keep me on the books to get the, because I desperately need other work doing as well, and they'll keep me on the books to get the other work done as well. So I was incredibly lucky. I feel very grateful, although it's a little bit sore. It's nothing like the pain that I've been dealing with over the past few months. Um, so yeah, I do feel so much better that it's finally out. So there is that. Um, yeah, we've got a lot going on this week. Um, I'm still not into the knitting yet. I'm really sorry. But tomorrow, this video will go live onto YouTube tomorrow. But tomorrow night, we are also doing our first ever live. We are super, super excited about it. So that is at eight o'clock tomorrow night and we're going to be yarn dyeing live on YouTube. We're going to go for about an hour episode, between 40 minutes to an hour. I can't imagine it being any longer than that at all. Um, but if you are around tomorrow night at eight o'clock GMT, which is UK time, do, I think it's GMT we're in. I think it's GMT. It's UK time anyway. Do come over and join us if you can, because I'm hoping it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be dying yarn live, so you guys get input into what we're doing, which is just going to be amazing. And you'll see a little bit of how we dye as well. And that yarn will go on sale into the update on the 1st of June as well. So you'll have a chance to purchase the dye, the yarn that we've dyed live. <laughs> Gosh, that was a mouthful. So over the past couple of weeks, I seem to have knit just on socks alone. I have cast on a new project on Sunday, which I'm really excited about, which I'll talk about after I've got through all the socks. I've done three pairs of socks over the past couple of weeks, but one of those was a sock tube. 
So I'm going to get straight into the knitting and I'll mention anything else as it comes up but I am going to try and just condense the episode a little bit just a little bit shorter I'm really sorry just because my mouth's a little bit sore so the first thing I did was Danny's socks you all know that I'm doing a year of the sock for Danny so every single month I'm making him a pair of socks I'm also doing the um West Knits year of socks but I'm only doing the ones that I want to do if I'm not over keen on the pattern or it's a pattern that's quite intensive then I'm not going to continue I'm not going to do it so last month's pattern I actually have here actually is this one and this came out last month and it is the striped tiles socks which are fabulous I think I showed them on the last um, episode actually and I will make them. I just, I, I'm, I don't want to make them just yet. You know, sometimes it's a pattern that you know you're going to make, but right now I'm not in that space to be making socks with lots of things going on. So I just wanted a really simple pair. So he had dyed his own yarn. I did show them last time, but they are now completed. You'll have to excuse how they look on the sock blockers because Danny's got really big feet and they just do not fit on the sock blocker. The sock blocker ends here. Um, but they are done aren't they lovely so this is Danny's yarn which is he called, I called not for Danny and it is the black one is a Cascade Heritage and I think the colourway of the Cascade Heritage is Noir and I just did five rounds of stripe on those and I think they look really really lovely so it has been wearing them already they are not fresh off the needles he's already worn them a few times and they've been in a wash as well so uh, they're not fresh off the needles but they are done and he's super happy to get socks so that's the first pair of socks that I made and then my lovely friend Tony sent me a sock tube. She said to me, she had this sock tube and she wasn't comfortable cutting it. It just went against all her instincts to cut it. She says, I know you've done it, Alex. Would you like the sock tube? So we ended up doing a little bit of a swap. I said, I'll only take it if you'll take a skein of yarn because, you know, sock tubes are such a lot of work. And she was sending me the leftover yarn as well, which is this one here. And the yarn is Head Over Heels, Stripe Up Your Life. So she sent me the leftover yarn as well. So I really wasn't comfortable just taking this sock tube as a gift because it was such a lot of work. So we did a little bit of a swap, which made me feel so much better. And she sent me this sock tube and oh my word, it's just gorgeous. So they were supposed to be for Danny. But... I ended up keeping them for myself so that is these isn't it gorgeous so all I did was put on heels toes one heel and one toe and one heel and one cuff that's how I did it um, so that one was a sock tube and I am super impressed I found a really 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 good tutorial for um binding off cuffs on socks it's actually Ellie at Craft House Magic now when I love a sock tube I absolutely love a sock tube but I get really frustrated when the cuffs really really flare this is the one um, that I've bound off now you can see that it doesn't really flare so in the past I've used all sorts of stretchy bind offs for the cuff and I came across one from Ellie at Craft House Magic and it's a sewn bind off and it is brilliant. You've still got all the same stretch, but it doesn't flare out. That is the dog snoring again. One second. Sorry, that's <laughs> she was snoring. She's so loud. She's a little pug across with a chihuahua and has the loudest snore ever. Um, so, yeah, back to the bind off it's brilliant I will link the video in the description box below it is really really good so I was super super impressed using that and really pleased that I finally found a bind off where it doesn't flare do you know what I mean sometimes when you're doing a bind off for the cuffs it just flares out and it doesn't make a difference when you're wearing the sock it makes absolutely zero difference but I just don't like the look of it so yeah that's that 
So I made those as well, really impressed with those. And then my final pair of socks were the Ukraine socks. So the Ukraine mal runs until the end of May. Oh, pick the socks up and I can be putting them on the blockers as I'm speaking to you. Um, it runs until the end of May and the only rules are you have to knit in yellow and blue yarn or you have to use a sock pattern by a Ukrainian designer. In order to be eligible for a prize, you must send a picture of your sock with a foot in it. The sock does not have to be finished. It's not about finishing socks. It's about the taking part and showing the support and walking with for Ukraine. So you don't have to finish whatsoever. Even if you can only get the toe of your foot on your foot or you've just got the cuff to put on, that's all you need to do. So I did have a pattern by a Ukrainian designer, um, but I didn't use it. I, want, I just wanted a vanilla pair of socks. So mine are yellow and blue because I had the kit that we sold. And these are those. And they're lovely. They're a little bit baggy because I've been wearing them and they need to go in the wash. <laughs> but I did knit them really quickly. I got a few comments because I didn't knit them in a day or two. But the reason was because, again, I did a sock tube. So I had some meetings last week, quite a few meetings last week. Um, so that's why I wanted to do them vanilla so I could just knit and knit and knit. So I actually knit two sock tubes. I started with the cuff and I did a hundred rounds and then put a toe on on both socks and then went in and added an afterthought heel. So they were knit very quickly, but they were just a sock tube. I can knit a hundred rounds in a day. So I was basically just knitting one in a day. And that was the only reason they were done quickly. I wasn't, it wasn't, you know, me trying to beat everybody else. I just had, there was, Josh's review meetings, he's got his exams coming up, so we've got a lot of revision going on. And I had um, some Zooms as well, so I was just knitting without really paying much attention to what I was doing. So they were knit really quickly, um, but I really like them. I do like the Afterthought heel, I think it's lovely. So that is those, they are done as well. And while we're on the Ukraine sock make along, we have been very, very, very generously donated such a lot of prizes. Um, so many people have given some beautiful prizes. I've got one here that I want to show you. So just one second. I can't go through all the prizes that we've got because I've had prizes donated. Jeanette's had prizes donated and so has Karen. So there are quite a few. Um, the prizes from us is going to be um, a skein of your choosing from the shop or if you would prefer a custom skein dyeing up I'll do that as well so if you get our prize that's what it'll be um, Jeanette is also making a project bag but there are many many more prizes donated there are, there are just loads I cannot believe how generous people have been so make sure you get your entries in because there are a lot of prizes to give out but the lovely Abby from Blue Heart Crochet contacted me and said that she wanted to donate a prize. So this is just amazing. This is actually from Liverpool. So this is a gorgeous tote, but tote bag and it says United by Music. Isn't it gorgeous? Which she, I think she got it from, correct me if I'm wrong, Abby, I think it came from the Eurovision um, merch place i think and there is also this gorgeous postcard which says liverpool loves ukraine and look at this isn't that a beautiful pin badge i just think it's perfect and it's got two pins on the back so it's nice and secure she also de donated one of these each to me, Karen and Jeanette, which is just amazing, absolutely amazing. So this, I'm not going to separate this. This is all going to be one prize. If you win Abby's prize, you get the tote bag, which is just, I really like it. And you get the postcard and the pin badge. So I won't separate it because they are just too gorgeous together. So we do have... Like I say, that's not all the prizes. There are so many prizes. Really, really exciting. 
So that is it for all the finished objects. Um, and I do have a new cast on. So let me grab my new cast on. Right. So I was on Instagram the other day. And Dawn from the Dawn's Days podcast posted a picture of the ranunculus that she was making. And it's a pattern that I've seen quite a few times before, but I've never had any inclination to make it. I can't find the cover picture. Where's the cover picture? And it, for no other reason than it's because everybody was making it. And normally if everybody's making it, I kind of like go, I'm not going to make it then. <laughs> I'm terrible like that. So... I have seen it, but I didn't really have the inclination to make it. But Dawn was making it and I thought, Do you know what? I, I've only been knitting on socks over the past couple of weeks. I had the rock pull sweater that I had been making and I really wasn't enjoying it. It had been on the needles for quite some time. You know the one I'm talking about with the mesh sleeves. I hadn't even got as far as the sleeves. I just was not enjoying the pattern. And sometimes that happens, you know, sometimes... You start a pattern and it's just, it's not what you want to do at that moment in time. So I decided in the end to frog the pattern. So I had the yarn that I dyed for the rock pull just sitting around and I thought, what am I going to make? Dawn posted this um, picture of her ranunculus and I thought, you know what? I'm going to make the ranunculus. So I bought the pattern. So if you don't know, this is the ranunculus. It's an oversized sweater. It can be customised quite a lot to short sleeve, long sleeve, cropped, longer length. It's really customisable and you can use any weight yarn from, I think, fingering all the way up to worsted. So it's really customisable and I thought I'm just going to knit it. I really wasn't sure what to expect. I've seen the majority of the patterns that I've seen for the ranunculus have been in four ply yarn. So it's that really loose gauge because it's knit on six millimeter needles. Now you do need to do a gauge swatch. Mine is over here. So you all know that I'm a tight knitter. I've normally got to go up a needle size. So I swatched on 6.5 millimetre needles, which gave me this. And I was quite happy with that, but I didn't get gauge. I was still two stitches out on the um, width uh, row, no, stitch gauge. And I was two rows out on the actual row gauge as well. But I really didn't want to go up to a size seven needle because I quite liked that. So my ranunculus will not be as oversized as some of them. And I'm fine with that. Also, I don't know if you can see on the pattern here, if I manage to, I don't know if you can. Can you see, because it's so oversized and wide, the armholes are quite low on some of them. I was a bit concerned. I didn't want the armholes so low, but I didn't get row gauge. So I thought that's kind of going to take care of itself. So I'm keeping an eye on the yoke depth. I'm just on the raglan increases at the moment and this is it. So I'm using a DK weight yarn. Oh, I really love it. And do you know what? It has got the best cast on in it it's what's it called a double twisted cast on i have never seen anything like it but oh my word i had such a blast doing that cast on i actually made a mistake about here and it wasn't a big mistake i could have easily just bypassed it but i thought no i'm gonna pull it back and start again just so i can do that cast on again so i actually pulled it back just to do the cast on again because i enjoyed it so much so it's a dk weight yarn you cast on a really small number of stitches. I won't give any numbers away. Um, but you cast on a really small number of stitches. That's the back. And it looks like it's not going to fit, but it does. Now, there is a lady, and what's she called? Oh, I might get the name wrong. If I've got it wrong, I'll put it uh, on the screen. I think it's called Snapdragon Tips and Tricks. There was a couple of stitches in here that I did not understand and I came across this lady, the double twisted cast on being the first thing. <laughs> 
this lady on YouTube who loves the ranunculus and she is doing tutorials for the tricky stitches in the ranunculus. There are no tricky stitches, I'm going to say, because the pattern's really well written and if you just do what the pattern says, you've done it. The problem I had was, because it's not a stitch that I've come across before, I was thinking, is that right? I've done what the pattern says, but is it right? So it was really good to have somebody showing you what to do just so for your own peace of mind, you knew it was right. So I will link that channel in the description box below. And she's got a whole section on um, the ranunculus. It was fantastic. She doesn't give anything of the pattern away. She just shows you some of the tricky stitches, which was brilliant. Now, the other thing that I really, really appreciated about this pattern is it's got German short rows in it, which are the ones that I like, so that's fine. Um, sometimes, when I'm doing German short rows, you're kind of looking for the stitch. Unless you put a stitch marker where you've put your, where you've done your turn, you're looking for the stitch. And, it, it, you know, it's fine, you can do it, it's not really a problem, but... When she does it, she has counted every single stitch. So she'll say, knit so many, knit your short row. So you know exactly how many stitches you've got in between those double stitches. It was just those little attention to detail things that I really, really appreciated. I had a little bit of problem with the pattern. So I told you I had my tooth out last night. It, it, well, I'm saying last night, I had my tooth out about tea time yesterday, which is why it's still a bit soaked. It really wasn't that long ago. It's only sort of nine o'clock in the morning. Um, and I was doing the pattern last night and I could not get my head around it. I kept thinking the numbers don't add up. And I kept looking at it thinking there's got to be a mistake in this pattern because the numbers don't add up. And then I was thinking there can't be a mistake in this pattern because it's so well written. This designer has not let this pattern go anywhere with a mistake in it. So I put it down and I thought, right, I'll look at it in the morning. It's got to be me. It has to be. And I was quite certain it was me and something I was doing, but the numbers just weren't adding up. So I put it down, I picked it up again this morning and I looked at it and I still couldn't work it out. And then when I've gone back, I left it another 10 minutes, grabbed a coffee, had a coffee, went back and looked at it. It was totally, utterly me. I just, when I've gone through and I've highlighted, it wasn't even, I can't even blame my tooth. <laughs> because when I got the pattern on Sunday and I've highlighted all the numbers where I'm knitting for my size, I've highlighted the wrong number. So I'd throw my stitch count out. Anyway, it's sorted. It's sorted now. But isn't it gorgeous? I love the yarn. The yarn is um, a DK weight yarn. It's what I dyed for the Rockpool sweater. And it is called Rockpool. So that's the first ball. So I've done well on the first ball. And I've only got another five rounds before I separate for the sleeve. So it's done really, really well. And like I say, I'm just keeping an eye on the yoke depth because this is going to stretch quite a bit Whoops! because of all the lace in it. And I don't want the yoke depth too low. I did take out a couple of plain knit rounds in the yoke on the, not on the raglan increase, on the yoke section. I took out a couple of plain knit rounds there that I, I thought I could get away with emitting just to keep an eye on that. But yeah. It's really gorgeous. It is such a fantastic pattern. And you know, you know when you see these patterns that everybody's made. Everybody's made them for a reason because they are amazing. And, you know, I've put off and put off and put off making it. And then I was, when I started knitting it, I thought, yeah, this is the reason everybody's made it because it's brilliant. This will not be my first ranunculus. It will be one of many. I want to make the love note as well. But it's just... It's so airy and it's so lovely and it's just such a fantastic, well-written pattern. I know I keep saying it, but if you have been on the fence about this project, I honestly make it. It's brilliant. So I'm going to sit, well, I'm going to edit this video. We've got to go out um, this afternoon. It's Harry's birthday next week. So we've got to go out and get some of his birthday things done. But when I've done all that today, I am going to sit, feel sorry for myself because of my <laughs> dental surgery yesterday. 
Um, I'm just going to sit and work on this and I'm just going to really, really enjoy it. It's just going to be fantastic. So that is all my projects. That is everything. I've already told you what's been going on over the past couple of weeks, so I don't need to go into that. You don't need to hear me go on about that again. I've got a coffee over there. One sec. Oh, no, I've missed out the whole section. Oh, dear. <laughs> I've missed out the whole section. It's sat right here. Right, so... I showed you last week the little bit of sewing that I had done. Now, I was desperate to make a quilt. Now, I am not ashamed this is full of mistakes. This was my first quilt, and the only way that I'm going to learn how to make a quilt is learn how to make a quilt. I've got to go through the process of learning. So, I did finish this quilt, and this is for Harry for his birthday. And I am so impressed. Now, the mis first mistake that I made was I knew I needed a walking foot. So I took myself onto Amazon and I bought myself a walking foot. It was twelve ninety nine, And I thought that was fine. That broke halfway through this quilt. So my first lesson I learned was I need to buy, because it was a universal one, I need to buy a walking foot that is designed for my sewing machine. So I'm going to be buying one of those so I can make another quilt. So that was my first mistake. So half of it has been done with a walking foot and half of it is very, very, very carefully been done with a normal foot because I wanted to finish it and I couldn't afford to get a walking foot straight away that wasn't a universal one off Amazon. So... I just very carefully finished it. There are a lot of mistakes. I'm not going to point them all out. I'm just going to point out the major mistake. So I did the binding. And I really did not want to hand stitch this binding on. So I, mis oh, I machine stitched it on. And because I've never done binding before, I made such a hash of it. So if you look here... That was because I hadn't caught the back, so I had to go back over that way. My corners look atrocious. And then here, I've completely missed the binding altogether. That's in two places, that. Um, here, it's not even straight. But... I'm not bothered because I learned so much. Harry's not going to be bothered that the stitching's not 100% right. He's just going to sit on this, he's going to play with it, he's going to hide under it, and he's absolutely going to love it. So he's not going to be bothered at all that that stitching is not right. So I'm not bothered about the mistakes at all. I am just pleased to have made it. I've started another quilt top. Um... But until I get a walking foot, there's not a great deal I can do. So I'm not going to rush around doing it. But yeah, so I did finish the quilt. I am so impressed with it. And then I also, I'm going to have to put a picture on the screen. So I told you Josh had decorated his bedroom. He had a notice board in his room. He's had it for years. It used to be mine when I was like nine, ten um, and he's had it for years in his bedroom. So he's redecorated his bedroom. And he says, oh, mum, there's that notice board of yours. You can have it back. So I'll pop a picture of that on the screen. And it's so old, but there is nothing wrong with it. And I kept looking at it and I thought, I'm not, I'm certainly not throwing it away because it's got sentimental, sentimental value. But B, there is nothing wrong with it. It's Mickey Mouse, so I can't really pop it up in the kitchen. And it's really discoloured. But we do need a notice board in the kitchen. So I had a little look on um, YouTube and I came across, again, I will link this video in the description box below, a lady telling you how to turn it into a notice board, which was absolutely brilliant. So I had everything that I needed. So I will pop a picture. No, I'll pop a video. I took some video footage of it. I'll pop that video here. And this is it. Isn't it cute? Little summer style notice board. It's so gorgeous. I've already got all my things on there that I like. These buttons I sewed in by hand. 
it took me ages but I really like the effect and you can't really see it here unless I kind of do that it does go in it is quite cushioned but yeah isn't it lovely so I made that as well so what do you think to that isn't it amazing and it I had some wadding when I was making this quilt I bought the wrong wadding for it so the wadding that I used for the notice board was exactly the stuff that you needed um so yeah I had the right wadding for it the only tricky bit I had was putting all the buttons on because you had to go through all the wooding plus the cork on the back with the needle um it was a little bit time consuming it wasn't hard to do because I just used a button to push the needle through all the layers and then pull it out on the other side um, but it was quite time consuming. It took me a fair few hours to put the buttons on. But I am so, so impressed with it. I really am. So I did that as well. So it's been quite a crafty couple of weeks. I'm quite impressed. And the 20 minute limit that I gave myself has gone out of the window because I've been chatting for 31 minutes. Oh my word. We have June vlogs coming up as well. Um, what I'm going to do is, for the June vlogs this time, just to make it a little bit easier on myself, I'm only going to vlog Monday to Friday. When it comes to a weekend, I'm not going to vlog. And I hope that everybody's okay with that. It's just sometimes the vlogs can be so time consuming, which is why we don't do them very often, because there's no break. Um, so if I just have that couple of days on a weekend, plus weekends are so much harder to vlog because we don't do anything. We're just like lazing around the house and we don't do anything. So you're not missing much anyway. So I hope that's okay. But yeah, we've got June vlogs coming up. We've got the live, which will be tonight if you're watching this on the day that it's been published. But it's been advertised on YouTube anyway. Um, so I hope that you can all join me for that. And I'm really sorry if this episode hasn't been as usual bubbly as it normally is I've tried really hard but my mouth's really hurting <laughs> so I'm gonna go and I hope you all have a lovely lovely day my mouth will be better by the time we do the YouTube live because this bit was filmed yesterday um but yeah I hope that you're all okay and I hope you have a lovely crafty two weeks hopefully I will see you for the live episode and yeah I'm gonna go I'm waffling I'm not even sure what I've said so <laughs> I'll see you all in two weeks, everybody. Bye-bye.